Oh, this is a video about the 32 pounder cannons. So you can see by the size of my size 10s, these aren't toys. In uh, their day, which was the 18th century, these would have been uh, weapons of mass destruction, really. Uh, they fired a 32 pound cannonball or grape shot or other things, chain shot, um, at a power of about a million foot pounds of muzzle energy. Uh, it was capable of destroying a metre thick of oak at um, 500 yards. So, you know, imagine that being a solid block of oak going straight through it and causing horrific splinters. Uh, on one encounter with the Spanish, a 32 can cannon uh, was used, uh, which was one of the lighter ones. These are the full fat ones, these are the long guns. Uh, the lighter ones carried less charge, uh, but they were good at close range. One shot killed 40 Spanish sailors, apparently. Um, so uh, these weren't to be feared, but also revered by our Royal Navy, who called them the old guns because they were always reliable. Um, they are incredible pieces of uh, history. These have been damaged, but they were at least saved and now being preserved by me um, for the next generation or uh, museum or whatever they end up in. Um, king George II, and there it is, George Rex, Rex being Latin for king, and the two there, and the, 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 royal, the royal signal. Um, this, that's a proof mark. So these would have been fired uh, twice their normal operating uh, sort of uh, charge. And if they survived that, then they were proofed with that arrow. This is their weight in 100 weight, 57 and 13, so 57 hundred weight. And in those days, 100 weight was about 111 pounds per 100 weight, so about 6,000 pounds. To give you an idea of how heavy these were, when the crew picked them up, they uh, decided to use a double axle plant trailer uh, rather than the high ab, and uh, the tires burst on it. Uh, when it went down the road. It's even in this state where they've lost the end, you know, they, they've been truncated for deactivation. They uh, uh, were still over two tons. They are um, incredible bits of history. Um, if you think that uh, we, we, you know, we ruled the seas, certainly in those days, um, partly because we perfected making cannons. You know, Henry VIII was the first person to see that making cheaper cannons out of cast iron instead of bronze, which was always the preferred material, gunmetal bronze, that um, there would be great advantage for any uh, nation. And we certainly perfected it. And actually, the making of these cannons is incredibly complex and in how they understood the methodology of the time, the casting, the heating, casting sort of three tons in weight. You know, these are things that aren't easy to do, aren't easy to achieve and they use wrought iron and cast iron in their construction and, and everything else. So, um, you know, an incredible piece of history. Uh, we also learned how to cast them solid and then cut them out uh, using a lathe, to, which was run by horses, I think, originally, and then moved to steam eventually. Um, but it was easier to then get a much more sort of straight and smart barrel than it was in the days when we were um, casting them with the uh, the hollow because uh, it was very difficult to get all that right with all the heat and the weight of the casting process and to some extent that standardization of approach and standardization of shot was one of the forerunners to the industrial revolution that then happened as well as the understanding of heat and materials um, and work equals heat so they they have multiple layers of history these things they are almost unique 32 pounders they would have been on ships of the line ships of the line were our Royal Navy ships that had over a hundred guns and you really wouldn't want to mess with a ship of the line with these. These were the, the bottom line. These were on the water line. They were the heaviest weapons. They had about 12 people um, running them, a gun crew of 12, uh, sometimes including quite a young boy or whatever to get around all the bits and, you know, there was all sorts of people that had all sorts of jobs on the uh, oak carts and everything and they would uh, get the get the elevation right for the shot. Uh, they were, um, yeah, incredibly powerful, uh, but but also very well liked. You know, even when they tried making lighter ones and things like that, they found that they wore out quickly or there were other problems where the old guns, as these were called, were uh, known to be reliable and were kept uh, for many, many years, actually. Uh, so there you are. Um, interestingly, on these trunnions, 
which would have been at the midpoint of their um, sort of centre of gravity. There's a maker's mark as well, um, you know, Bloomfield or whatever. If you look carefully enough, you can see a maker's mark on there. Um, but yeah, um, uh, British Navy, Royal Navy cannons, 32 pounders, Nelson Smashers as they were called, um, weapons of mass destruction of their day, um, preserved for the next generation, hopefully. One of my most prized possessions, I can be honest. It's, uh, I feel incredibly privileged to have them and look after them. Uh, they are soaked in ACF 50. Um, and I'm looking into what's the best way of preserving them because they were just left outside in a field. They didn't come from the sea or anything. It was a civil engineering project. They're covered in concrete. I think some of these were used as bollards um, uh, as well. <laughs> I know apparently parts of London have got these things set into the set into the pavement, uh, which we captured from the Spanish because they made exceptionally good and tough bollards. Um, but um, you know, there are not many of the 32 pounders around. And I can see why, you know, they were so incredibly heavy. Uh, it's very difficult to get them here even. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously at one point in time, people would have just scrapped these things. Uh, I'm glad some of them survived that aren't just on victory and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, 18th century, King George II, 32 pounders. Thanks for watching.